When I was in second grade, I told my teacher that I had a paper route to get out of a homework assignment. If all of my friends had been on Twitter and able to tell her in real time that I was full of crap, I would have been in big trouble. This is Storyteller Live. Sky, this isn't the news. I'm going to show you some of the best things going on right now. Second offensive possession for Tennessee. Hey everybody and welcome to Storyteller. My name is Kevin Shively and I've been a storyteller for a long time through radio, newspaper, and now as a marketer. In this show we're going to be discussing interactive, real-time storytelling and the people who are making it happen. We're talking about the doers, the makers, the producers, the marketers in the entertainment, media, and sports landscape. The best around. And luckily, you won't just have to listen to me talk. I'm going to introduce you to a whole slew of hosts that's going to take us through this season. Let's check it out. I'm excited to introduce you to one of our hosts, Sky Muller. Uh, Sky has been a storyteller for a long time. Sky, tell us how you got the blue check mark on Twitter. Oh, that was a big moment in my life. Um, well, I was semi-famous, I guess, is how I would say I got it. I would say you were all the way famous. <laughs> I was, all the, I, was I like to call it local famous, um, or also, like, not really famous. But I was uh, doing the local TV gig down in Eugene, and um, our director of social said, hey, if you want a blue check mark, send me your email address. So I shot it off, and it was that easy. And now I am holding on to it for dear life. Nice. So local news gig, what were you doing for the news station? Yeah, I was a sports director down in Eugene. It's officially Muller time. So um, anchoring. Emotions ran high. And in reporting. To speak with head coach. And basically just telling stories. It's and my final show on K Valley. It's why I wanted to get into that industry is I wanted to tell people stories. I believe everybody has a story, and that's how we connect with one another is through our stories. And so I wanted to be the person to tell those stories. Awesome, awesome. So, and obviously that's a big part of what you do now. Uh, on our next episode, you're gonna be interviewing Kat Jan Smith from NFL Network. Tell us a little bit about why you're excited about the Storyteller Show. Oh, I mean, I'm stoked about it because A, with someone like Kat, it's somebody that I work with all the time and, and it's gonna give me an opportunity to get to know her a little better, but it's also um, kind of the more behind the scenes side of all these major networks that we all consume every day, right? NFL Network. Uh, and everyone else that we partner with around um, the country. And we get to hear kind of the meat of what goes into how these networks tell stories about the biggest athletes and the biggest um, celebrities and the biggest people in this country. And um, I'm just fired up to hear how that happens and to hear more about Kat. Awesome. Sky, we're excited for the season, excited to have you as a host, and looking forward to next month's episode. Awesome. I'm fired up. I'm here with one of our hosts, Christine Borman. I'm sorry, excuse me, three-time Emmy award-winning Christine Borman. Uh, also, our producer of the show keeps us all in check. Very excited to have you here. Very excited to chat through what you're excited about. Christine, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into storytelling. Yeah, I may never get you to stop introducing me that way. I I've don't accepted think you it. Uh, like Sky, I also come from news, but the other side of the camera, I was a producer for five or six years here in Seattle. Absolutely love telling stories. You know, used to build rundowns on a daily basis, worked in a morning show, an evening show, did some investigative reporting. So, you know, story, telling stories is kind of the core of what I love. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to tell, help tell other people's stories with Storyteller. Since your time in the newsroom, how has storytelling changed? And, and talk a little bit about what we're trying to do with Storyteller here. Yeah, so 10 years or so ago when I first got into news, social media wasn't really a mm -hmm. thing uh, you know people were people were on Twitter to talk to their friends they were on Facebook to keep in touch with high school you know alumni and now people are telling stories in real time it's happening right now it's really organic it's it's raw it's emotional and it's really where communities are going to tell stories and it's where we're going to get stories first often you know, the news is no longer appointment viewing where people are going home and they're waiting until 5 p.m. to see what happened in the world that day. It's in your pocket, it's on your iPad, it's on your computer, and it's nonstop. And, you know, it's changing how we need to tell stories in real time, organically, faster, using this content that our community is producing all the time. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think the the interactive piece is is one of the most exciting parts about that. And that's what one of the things I'm most excited about for this show. Yeah. As a producer, if you had told me to talk to my viewers in real time, it was MOS interviews from six hours before that were in the can that we walked around the streets of Seattle to get. There were no live real time comments or questions coming in from you know, guests at home watching, not to make myself sound like a grandma, but that just didn't exist, and it does now, and it's such a more interactive way that we can not just tell the news, but tell any type of story. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Excited to get into this with Christine uh, throughout the coming episode. It's going to be a ton of fun. Awesome. Can't wait. And finally, I am tickled to introduce you to our final storyteller, Nathan Peterson, who has been using social to tell stories for a long time. Uh, Nathan, tell us a little bit about how you got into storytelling. Well, first I'd say it was definitely a little bit of luck and timing. Uh, when I was coming out of college, social media was still very kind of in that organic state before it turned into a little bit more of a paid media property. Mm -hmm. And so in the organic times, uh, I was busy trying to convince different people across different Microsoft organizations uh, how to use things like Facebook and Twitter in its very early stages. Um, I was recruited out of Microsoft to go work for T-Mobile and was actually their very first official social media employee. Which is how we got to know each That's other. That's how we got to know each other. And, uh, you know, I was very fortunate, again, just kind of luck and timing to, to be the kind of initial per person uh, uh, to build an entrepreneurial effort inside of T-Mobile uh, to build up social media there from, awesome. from kind of the ground up. So you've been in social storytelling for a long time, yep. uh, super old. Uh, tell <laughs> us a little bit about how social storytelling has changed in general, storytelling overall, and why you're excited for this specific show. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we're very fortunate to be a part of this media evolution, and, and it's an evolution that's been happening for you know 10 plus years now. Um, stories used to be, you know, news, sports, and entertainment were told at you, and then social media came about and allowed that kind of two-way conversation to take place. And now you're seeing the the combination of the two, where uh, traditional media properties and social media properties are, uh, you know, providing platforms for people to actually, you know, not only create great content but be able to have conversations around that content instantaneously. I mean, you know, when's the last time you? even saw something breaking in the news that didn't actually break on Twitter first, mm -hmm. right? Or you have somebody like a Kevin Durant that's announcing where he's going next on Instagram, right? I mean, this the, the channels themselves are becoming that property. And then you've got conversation back and forth with fans, with influencers, um, you know, with the consumer. And, and so for us, uh, you know, I, I think it's a really exciting opportunity to be able to you know, be uh, 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 you know, be at the forefront of this and be able to talk to some of the mo foremost experts on uh, two-way engagement across media. Awesome. Well, I'm excited for that. I know you are too. Uh, we're excited to share this with you all season long. <laughs> Welcome back to Storyteller. Although I don't know why I'm welcoming you back. You didn't actually go anywhere. We did. Uh, this segment is called The Lightning Round. and each episode, we'll be asking our guests a series of lightning-fast questions. This week, we're going to be doing it with our hosts starting right now. First question, when you were young, what was the job that you wanted and what was your actual first job? I wanted to be an NBA player and then I realized that wasn't gonna happen, then I wanted to be a sports agent and that wasn't gonna happen. My first job was Blockbuster Video. Job I wanted, professional baseball player, first job I actually had, on-field MC for the Everett Aqua Sox. I wanted to be an English literature teacher. I was a gymnastics coach. Okay, next question from Twitter. Tell us about a story that recently moved you. Since we just finished the Women's World Cup, it was really powerful to see the movement across social media talking about pay uh, inequalities uh, between men and women. And so I was excited to see that. That was very moving and excited to see what comes from it. Next question. You're fresh out of college, on your first job. What advice would you give yourself? Sleep when you're dead. <laughs> Just kidding, kind of. Uh, say yes to opportunity, even if it means staying up all night long. Uh, ask questions, don't stop learning. Don't be afraid of being uncomfortable. Next question, who is one of your favorite storytellers? My favorite storyteller is Tom Rinaldi. I think I cry every single time I watch a story of his on ESPN. Big time storyteller. 
Okay, in two words or less, the best stories are? Best stories are contextual and interactive. Best stories are authentic and honest. The best stories are authentic and happening right now. That was way more than two words. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this. Our first Real episode of Storyteller with real people, not that you didn't love hearing from us, will be next month. We hope you'll join us then. Sky, you'll be taking the baton. Tell us, what do you have lined up? Yeah, bat and lead off, Catherine Chan Smith from the NFL Network. Kat's been at the NFL Network since day one. So she has been telling stories for a long time on one of the top networks, doing some of the best content out there. So we couldn't be more excited to have Kat. If you have questions, which you better have questions because we're diving into the mind of a social genius. Hit us up, hashtag Storyteller Live with questions for Kat. It's going to be awesome. Awesome. Can't wait to see it. We can't wait to have you guys join us next month. Do you want me to clap? Yeah. Sure. Oh, sure. <laughs> Can I clap too? We'll do this every week. It's not every week. <laughs> We'll do this every episode because we're doing it monthly. This episode is going to be a lightning round. Or... <laughs> welcome back. Although I don't know why I'm welcome. <laughs> now I just feel stupid saying that part. <laughs> Where should I start? What did he say? <laughs> One, two, three. Just, just talk normal. Stop being an idiot. Where, where are we like pretending not to pay attention? Are we switching our phones? What so are we doing? Yeah. What do I do with my hands? Yeah.